Life as a mercenary can be rough. Hello and welcome. I'm Easy and I'm here to tell you, you have the right tools for the job. When you start your journey as the leader of a mercenary company in Battletech, you will have available to you three medium mechs with a range of short to medium long range weaponry, as well as two light mechs which come equipped with short range weapons only. In the barracks of the Leopard, you will also have, in addition to your main character, four mech warriors waiting. On your very first mission, your main character will be piloting the Blackjack, which is carrying the most firepower in your stunning lance, but it has no LRMs, meaning it needs a clear line of sight in order to fire on any given target. Its two AC2s have an extreme range of 720 meters, but the Blackjack really shines in between 120 and 270 meters, where it can fire all its weapons to great effect. Glitch starts off in the Vindicator, which comes with weapons for medium long range in the form of a PPC, an LRM5 for indirect firing, a medium laser for close to mid range, and finally a close combat support small laser. Because of the weapon loadout, the Vindicator will never be able to fire all of its weapons at the same target with maximum effect, which is why Glitch is the perfect pilot for this mech, as she has the ability to use multi target an ability that lets her fire on three separate enemies instead of a single one. The Shadowhawk is being piloted by Behemoth and comes with an LRM-5 for indirect firing, an AC-5 which packs a solid mid-range punch, and a medium laser and SRM-2 for short to mid-range. Between 180 and 270 meters, Behemoth is able to fire all of the Shadowhawk's weapons to maximum effect, but the real power comes from her bulwark ability which reduces all incoming damage by 50% from the front and the sides, as long as she does not move her mech. Turning is still allowed. Seeing as the Shadowhawks comes with the most armor, as well as structure points of all the mechs you start out with, Behemoth and the Shadowhawk fit very well together. Decker starts off in the Spider, which, with its extreme speed, is good for flanking the enemy and getting those rear shots in. If you reserve Decker to the last phase in a round, you can move him into position, fire on the enemy's weak point, and fire directly again at the start of the next round. Do be very careful though, as a light mech that isn't moving is at serious risk of taking some heavy fire. These four mechs share two major strengths. They are all quite fast, and they all come equipped with jump jets, making them even more maneuverable. Do keep a close eye on your heat levels though, as jumping around can quickly build up heat. Jump jets are a good way to get that hit in on an exposed enemy's flank to take out a critical weapon, but they're also great to get your mech out of the enemy's line of fire and allow it a bit of breathing space. During missions, you want to keep your lands close together until the first enemy comes within range. At that point, you'll want Behemoth to move or jump forward and brace making her Shadowhawk the primary enemy target. The rest of your lands will move into firing positions around her, preferably while moving as fast as possible, gaining the maximum amount of evasion, making them harder to hit. Focus enemies down or take out the heavy weapons on enemy mechs, either by flanking them to focus on the arm or side torso that that weapon is located on, or by using your morale for a precision strike. As soon as you finish the first mission as the Merc Commander, head on over to the barracks. Here I would suggest you give Decker the sensor lock ability, which will gear him towards a scouting role within the unit, locking targets which are outside the line of sight of your lance, so the rest of your allies can start firing into them early, but also reducing evasion on the enemy target by two ticks. And Medusa, who is itching to get into a fast mech, the evasive movement skill, which will make him even harder to hit, as he'll dash across the battlefield in his future Jenna or Firestarter. With your first mission completed, one or more of your mech warriors may have become injured and perhaps your mechs have sustained some damage to their structure as well. You do have a spare mech warrior as well as a spare mech, but perhaps one isn't enough. Getting extra mech warriors is as simple as recruiting them at the local hiring hall. Your choices at the start of your career will be quite limited as your MRB rating is still very low, 
but even the greenest of mech warriors can become hardened veterans over time. Replacing a mech within your lands, due to time needed to repair a damaged one, can be a different story, as mechs are expensive, limited, and in some cases highly specialized. Your locust, for instance, would be a poor replacement for when your Shadowhawk is stuck in the shop due to repairs. Speaking of that locust, it's a little speed demon, much like the spider. It has less structure than the spider, but a little bit more armor. It only has a single medium laser, but has an additional two machine guns, which have very limited range, but will fire in support when you decide you want to smash your locust's head into the cockpit of an enemy mech or stomp on a vehicle. One big thing to note, however, is that the locust has no jump jets. And that's about it for your starting lance, the mechs, as well as the mech warriors. If you have any questions or comments, do leave them in the section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. I would appreciate it greatly. Perhaps you'll even share the video with your friends. Thank you for watching, and good luck on the field, Commander.